Today we are checking out the Trek Checkpoint for 2022. So this has been a hugely popular model. Obviously a lot of people, road bikers and mountain bikers alike, are all liking this new gravel seam. It's off-road, it's on-road, it's a little more durable and comfy than what the road bikes used to be. But it's fast-growing and they're hard to come by. Since 2022, models are now all released. Thought I'd do a quick video explaining kind of the three models of which Trek has dropped the AL. So no longer is there a simple entry-level model starting with just the AL4. They have skipped straight up to the ALR5. Not much has changed throughout the original part spec of this bike. It is still coming with that Shimano GRX system. This has a 300 series aluminum frame. So relatively good frame, relatively lightweight. Obviously, there's nothing wrong with it when I say relatively. It's great aluminum frame. But obviously, they do have a higher end aluminum one. I'd assume this is just for durability, honestly. Maybe it's just to keep the price down. There's no real explanation for it. Front fork on it is still carbon fiber. Trek has this with all their road bike models. And it's just going to make for a much comfier, comfier ride. Right now, I'm blasting along some gravel. And it's not bad at all. And this one's just the AL model. Carbon front fork as well. But carbon fiber does absorb a lot of vibration. It does make it a lot more comfy. And then the overall geometry on a gravel bike compared to a road bike or a race style bike is just so comfy. You really don't feel like you're putting 100% of your weight on the bars. So it's taking all that beating. Even when crossing over the train tracks, it's still comfy. Like it's surprising how nice it is when you're talking about something that has no suspension and relatively small wheels. Now, this one here has 32s on it. Obviously, with the ALRs, you're going to be going up to a bigger 40 or 45 style of tire. And that is the same for all of their models. They're all a bit bigger. So the higher end and actually all the new models, so the ALR and up, all are able to take a 650B tire. So essentially a 27 and a half inch rim and fit a 2.1 inch wide tire on it. So you could go to some more beefy, gnarly off-road stuff if you're really needing bigger than a 700C by 45. That is a pretty big tire. The big benefit to go into the 650s is, is you're gonna get a higher volume tire for that size. So it'll absorb even more. If you're doing a lot more harsh gravel or even more off-road, it may be something you'd be interested in switching to. The saddles between this one and the higher end ones are not that big of a change. Obviously, they all have the new Verse seat from Bontrager, and that is relatively comfy. I think it's pretty good. Um, there is the Comp and the Elite one, but not a big change there. You may even just have your own perfect saddle you want to put on it, but I think it's a big improvement from what used to come with road bikes. They used to have a bit of a, a cheapy one, and now they're all coming with it, and this is the ALR all the way up to the SLR now. So like I said, they've got rid of the AL model, which is a little disappointing. It puts that entry price range around the $3,000 mark, which is steep for that being their only model. Not even the Demones could put a big tire on it. Like you can fit a teeny bit more of an aggressive tire, but you're not fitting like a 40C on there. So it is interesting that they've done such a jump. Um, It could be just a part supply thing and it could be something they're changing in the future. But the Trek Checkpoint ALR5 is that entry-level one. It's definitely a great value. It's built well. It will be able to do pretty much anything any of the other ones will. It has that Shimano GRX drivetrain, which shifts really well. Looks cool. There's no plastic on it. It just looks clean and low profile. Um, and that's one of the big differences when you go to a gravel bike. They kind of take away all the fancy looking stuff, which made it look really sleek and round and smooth. And they've just brought it down to its natural metal, really clean, really low profile. And it, it looks nice and serves a purpose. Duh, and stuff won't get in there. There's less chance of plastic breaking if you're off-road, just like a mountain bike. They essentially keep it down to just the metals. After the ALR models, they are jumping straight into carbon fiber. This year with the SL. So the SL models are the essentially entry-level carbon bikes they're fancy they work well they're still a 500 series carbon so it's lightweight you can put all that kind of fancy 
integrated racks and mounts to it. And I mean, both the ALR and the SL have an insane amount of rack mounts. You can put full fenders on it. You can put front mounts on it. There's like 27 bottle cage mounts, almost literally, um, which is crazy. Okay, well, there's not, but there's almost, there's probably about five or six, plus all the bags you can get to it. Bontrager just came out with the whole adventure line, and all these integrate to it. You can make it a really cool, sleek-looking bike, and it's going to be a lot lighter weight, but a lot more stiff, which is beneficial to carbon, a little comfier, which carbon will absorb even more vibration. Still an aluminum handlebar on the SL models, but it's still going to be way better than just a straight aluminum frame it's going to absorb that vibration be a lot more reactive and it's going to be fantastic this whole area was completely flooded out this year as you can see there is just dead grass everywhere puddles this was a golf course great riding i don't think you're supposed to be here after night but it's just too good to ignore there is 10,000 bugs so so keep your mouth closed when riding all three of them are tubeless ready right out of the box you do have to put in a little bit of effort to make it that way but it is pretty appealing. We're seeing more and more people switch to it. So between the SL models and the ALR, there's not a huge amount of difference apart from the frames. Part spec is relatively similar. I don't know if you'll notice a huge jump in it. Even the price is not a crazy jump. Like it's a thousand bucks. It's really just that frame you're paying for. You're getting all the adjustment to it with that ISO speed for comfort. It will be easier to ride on with just overall fit and feel. But relatively, they're a very similar bike. The entry level one is now the ELR and kind of the higher end, more high performance, adjustability, maybe higher kilometer one, you know, is going to be something like the SL. Now, the new one this year is the SLR. This is the one most people are interested in, surprisingly enough, but least amount of people will buy. The SLR is exactly what it says. The R model is their race, so they actually go up to a much higher end carbon fiber at 700 series. So it's super lightweight, even stiffer. And then what's shocking is they actually take away a lot of the mounts. So... No 27 bottle cages on this one. They really reduce it down to just back to the more classic ones. This is their race model. This is for Lachlan, whatever his name is. And this is for the guy who wants to take as minimal as possible, have as lightweight as possible, but go on some big adventure rides. And there's a lot of guys out there who want to do that. Not everyone wants to put 15 pounds of gear on their bike. Many guys just want to ride road but actually do it on all the gravel and stuff. And I think it's a really good addition to the series. It's going to be interesting to see how many sell. Obviously, there is quite a price jump even in the kind of entry-level models. You're well over the $7,000 mark. It's, you know, it's not as easy to chew as $3,000 or $4,000. It's a, a pretty big jump, but... You are obviously going to some crazy high-end part specs to all of these ones. I think the lowest one is um, the SLR6, and that one comes with ETAP. So it's not like they're part specking them with GRX. This is pretty much only available to electronic drivetrains, that fancy wireless shifting. Assumably, they'll eventually transition to the 12-speed Shimano as well as that comes available. Right now, you can really only find it in the SRAM stuff, but that's not bad. I like the SRAM stuff. It looks super clean. I get that a little power cable is pretty small in comparison to um, a regular cable, but no cable at all looks even better, and I don't think it's too much of a hassle to charge a battery. I don't know about you. Would you add an extra battery to your charging station at night? Obviously, they last quite a few shifts, but it's something to consider when you're looking at those higher-end bikes. Are you going to have to get multiple batteries? Things like that. So, obviously, there is a lot more to talk about between each model. There is an insane amount of bikes, but what it comes down to is it's not available. 
And that's pretty much the straight up truth. Um, every shop I see is getting very slim quantities or they're coming in and going very fast and or you got to get on that wait list right now. And that doesn't matter what the model. Gravel bikes, I kind of like the fat bikes. They're the in thing right now, but they're definitely not the primary bike to be built by any manufacturer. All three models are fantastic. You've got the ALR, entry-level aluminum, carbon fork, really great shifting. Nothing wrong with it, honestly. That is a go-to gravel bike. When you jump up to the SL models, you go into a full carbon frame, and that alone is going to make it that much comfy. Add in the fact that you'll have Trex um, ISO speed in it. It's going to make it just a fantastically easy bike to ride. So comfortable. It'll go anywhere. You will have no worries about being uncomfortable honestly that's the big jump to it and for a thousand bucks to lose a bit of weight and do a comfort ride that that's uh, enough for me and especially when you're already spending three an extra grand isn't a huge jump up the slr though is the oddball in it all it is something everyone wants the fastest lightest gravel bike around but it's also the least most popular one guaranteed because most people will compromise and take a little bit cheaper of a bike and get more benefit from bags and water bottle cages. But who knows, really? You, you just never know with these bikes. The SLR could come to be one of the better selling ones because it'll be a lot faster on the road. Being that much stiffer, way higher end carbon and way less bottle mount. Like all these little mounts and cage mounts add weight on the internals as well not just the carbon fiber yes i am trying to catch up with that cough there not just carbon fiber but all of the little rivets and stuff inside a frame add up so to strip them away really makes a huge difference anyway hopefully this kind of guides it a little bit to you i don't think i'll be doing a full video on all of them unless people really want one the Checkpoint series is super popular, and if you're a mountain biker, it's pretty enjoyable. If you're a road biker, it just opens that many more roads to you, and essentially it's the same thing, just way more open. It is a lot of fun ripping around town, especially at night in the evening. I don't know if anyone else does this. It's quiet. There's not many people on the streets. You get to fly through everywhere. There's no one to bother you, essentially no cars. And I think I remember why I was chasing that cop because he doesn't have his headlights on, which I realize as we pull up to him here. But I think he gets away. Let's wait it up. Nope, we catch up to him. But I'm confident he didn't have his headlights on. He just had his daytime driving lights on. And I thought about saying something, but I just did not. <laughs> anyway, I guess that was a bit of ramble at the end. Hopefully you enjoyed this. It is fun to ride these bikes, so I recommend you try it out when you can. Otherwise, hopefully you enjoy the rest of this, and the snow is melting, so we'll be on bikes sooner than later. All right, guys. Good luck. Thanks for watching. I went back and double-checked. Yeah, no, he did not have any lights on, which was funny. Always the people who don't have the lights on are the people who should have the lights on.